uh, first i will uh, give brief intro about seasoning what is seasoning see seasoning is basically process uh, that we remove during the this process of seasoning we remove moisture from the wood it is primarily a drying process but there is a difference between drying and seasoning all european countries and american countries they use they use word uh, wood drying in wood science whereas we here in india and some asian countries we use wood seasoning because seasoning is little bit more compared to drying uh, i will uh, you will appreciate with one uh, example suppose you want to purchase some good quality rice from the grocer when you visit to the grocer he will show you different type of rice then one of them you will select and ask what is the price suppose he says that uh, sona masuri and it is 62 rupees kg another sack of same sona masuri is kept there and he has uh, put a level that it is 68 rupees per kg then naturally you will ask why this is costly and why this is cheaper than this whereas both of them are looking same and name is same then he will tell that sir this 68 rupees per kg sona masuri rice is 2 years old then i don't think that anybody will question because we know by traditional wisdom older is the rice better will be the taste and texture so what is the scientific reason behind it that anybody who is from agriculture background may appreciate that when we uh, put rice in big sacks jute uh, boras and we keep in the go down that gradually that moisture comes out so this is seasoning whereas after dehusking we never keep rice under sun it will damage its health so seasoning means gradual removal of water from wood without harming its health otherwise if you do you are in hurry and you take out moisture very fast by directly keeping under sun or applying more uh, temperature by some means then what will happen water will come out but while coming out it will deform the wood wood may split it may develop cracks through and through and uh, ultimately it may become warped or dishaped so product manufacturing will either not possible or if at all it is possible the quality of product will not be up to the mark so then question comes why we should do seasoning see a freshly felled timber contains a large quantity of moisture the major portion which has to be removed before the timber is fit for use of most purposes i have written on the slide third point now you must understand that see uh, when live trees there in the forest it contains large volume of water and most of the portion of this water is unwanted for making product for example i will give you example of a cricket bat wherein we need very good stroke as well as its weight should be very less so light weight so that uh, a player uh, can hit very good uh, boundary out of this using this bat as well as he should not feel that it is very heavy so impact strength here in cricket bat the impact strength is very important because a bowler is bowling his ball at, at about 154 km per hour and i have seen in t20 matches of cricket that some good player hit the sixer in very first over or second over so you can imagine the impact between ball and bat when a sixer is scored that impact strength is not possible in every wood so lesson learned is that different woods are recommended for different end uses for example for cricket bat salix alba which we call kashmir willow indian willow or in english willow is best suitable wood for making cricket bat whereas for making door and window frames we need we say that the best wood recommended is shorya robusta sal wood indian sal wood especially then for making door and window shutters traditional woods like delverja sissu shisham or technona gardis teak are recommended 
so seasoning improves all desirable strength properties of wood we will see in next slide what are the benefits of doing the seasoning you can appreciate these are the advantages of seasoning number one seasoning reduces the likelihood of mold stain or decay because if uh, sawn wood is left in the nature without seasoning so during rainy season wood being hygroscopic will absorb lot of water and as due to favorable conditions of temperature it will develop mold stain or decay over it or all the three things or any two things so this will mar the beauty of the wood and nobody will like to touch such infected wood similarly if some, somebody is dealing with large volume of wood and especially in transportation as i told that freshly cut wood contains very large amount of water so if he has a choice to transport either seasoned wood or wet wood then he should go for seasoned wood because that time he will not be transporting water otherwise in case of wet wood you are transport you are paying the cost of transportation of water also third one is very important for us as wood dries most of its strength property also improve that is very important because we need strength properties raw wood cut directly cut from the forest is a raw wood it doesn't have optimum uh, strength properties for example i gave the example of cricket bat where impact strength should be very high similarly hockey blade impact strength should be very high but in case of chair there are two members four feet they should have very high crushing strength whereas joist above which we sit they should have very good bending strength so like that there are many uh, mechanical properties which are desirable in end products become optimum when we when we season the wood then sinkage that accompanies drying takes place before the wood is used as a product because we don't we say that in wood science and technology we say a, a wooden product is best when its dimension stability is very high it means it, its dimensions are not changing or fluctuating with the flu, uh, corresponding fluctuations of temperature and relative humidity in the surrounding atmosphere so dimension stability is very very required so fourth point refers to dimension stability of the product so once we season the wood the loose hydroxyl sites which are otherwise present in the amorphous region of cellulose chains microfibrils are removed to a greater extent due to absence of oh groups in amorphous region of uh, cellulose wood becomes dimensionally stable so seasoning helps in achieving the dimension stability of wood also then strength of joints made with nails and screws is greater in dried wood than in green very clear wood must be relatively dry before it can be glued or treated with preservative and fire retardant chemicals that is very important because there is another science processing wherein we uh, treat uh, wood or uh, perishable species of wood or all bamboo species with some chemicals we call it wood or bamboo preservation that is a separate science but what happens that the question comes whether we should go for wood seasoning or wood preservation which steps should be taken first so answer is not either seasoning or preservation it is a hybrid type when we want to treat our wood with some wood preservatives as well as fire retardants so what happens that first of all we go for seasoning of wood and we bring down the moisture content up to fiber saturation point this is a point when all the this is a moisture content of any wood when all the free water has been removed from the wood but at the same time the cell walls are fully saturated with bound water at that time whatever is the moisture content of wood it is called its fsp so initially we season wood up to fsp then we treat this partially seasoned wood with chemicals wood preservative chemicals including fire retardant chemicals 
then after this treatment again we season the wood to the range of moisture content 12 to 8 percent so this is the real process what we follow then uh, next one is drying improves finishing characteristic of wood now before going to further i would like to tell how much maximum water may be present in a given wood it completely depends on the species because different wood, wood species have different water holding capacity due to its anatomical features number one number two the moisture it is also very important from which geographical region the wood has been grown the moisture content also depends on this factor for example suppose your teak is coming from cherapuji which is a place in northeast india where annual average rainfall is very high so naturally any wood which is grown in that area contains large amount of water whereas if the same species is coming from jodhpur which is arid region of india it will contain lesser water as compared to the same species of same age group which is coming from cherapoti so you must appreciate these things that depending on the nature of a species and depending on from where the wood is coming that there is a variation of moisture content in the wood so what is maximum reported water in the wood you can imagine that a piece three feet long piece of wood just imagine you have a three feet long piece of wood i will not go for uh, telling about thickness and width because it doesn't matter only length is important in case of seasoning so suppose you are able to squeeze this piece by magic just like sponge and it is squeezed to its length of one foot only from three feet to one foot only then we can say that this one foot material is woody material whereas two feet volume lengthwise two feet whatever the volume was present in two feet was water only so i can say confidently that the maximum reported water we have seen is two third of volume of a given wood provided we know the species because different species have different water holding capacity and if it is coming from uh, a region geographical region where annual average rainfall is very high so there are chances that this wood will contain two third of its volume as water okay this is the maximum water seen in any wood species then before seasoning because we do commercial seasoning wherein we create conditions favorable for gradual removal of water from wood these favorable conditions are three number one force as temperature temperature as force because force is required to take out the moisture and here force is temperature so we create temperature which is required for removal of moisture number two in order to pass the temperature this to pass this temperature to every plank which is to be seasoned we need air also because direct temperature exposure is not possible to every plank so air passes touches heat source gets warm and this warm air goes through the stack uniformly and during each pass it removes few water molecules which are loosely sitting on the top most layers of each plank there are two layers one is we can say uh, beneath and one is on the top so from these two layers of every plank the warm air removes few loosely uh, uh, bound water molecules and this process goes on goes on inside the kiln so depending on the permeability of the kiln number of days are taken that i will explain in my next lecture right now then uh, moisture content how we calculate the moisture content that is very important because before seasoning we must know what is the moisture in our wood 
it is always uh, indicated in percent form with respect to our dry weight of any wood. So what we do, we take any piece of wood. It means it should be minimum two feet long. It should be minimum two feet long from given lot of timber, sawn timber. Then we mark a strip along the length, which should be anywhere from 15 to 25 mm long length. Here again, I am saying that width and thickness doesn't matter. Only length, along the length, we cut a strip from middle portion of this given piece. And it should be somewhere from 15 mm to 20 mm long. And immediately after coming cutting, we measure its weight. We record its weight in a digital weighing machine having least count of one gram will be sufficient in this case. Practically, I'm telling. Otherwise, people say milligram. I say gram is sufficient. So after cutting this piece, immediately we will weigh its weight in the digital weighing machine. It's known as initial weight of this piece. Then we do one experiment. We take a laboratory oven, which is reverse of a refrigerator, because inside refrigerator we create cooling effect, whereas inside laboratory oven we create heating effect. In both the cases, electricity is required. So inside oven we will keep this piece immediately after measuring its weight, which is initial weight. And then we will switch on our oven and set the temperature anywhere between 101 degrees Celsius to 105 degrees Celsius. I'm repeating temperature must be in between 101 to 105 degrees Celsius means neither it should be less than 101 nor it should be more than 105 degrees Celsius. Then we switch on the, uh, after setting the temperature in this range, we switch on the, uh, this oven and leave it for 24 hours. For example, suppose today we have started the experiment at 10 a.m. Then tomorrow at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. we will open the door of oven and take out this piece and again measure its weight. And after major recording its weight, again we will keep this piece inside the oven. We have not switched off the oven. Oven is running electricity uh, just switched on continuously then afterwards every two hours we measure the weight of this wooden piece once we get two continuous reading same reading means weight is not further decreasing it means all the water present in this piece has been removed means moisture content has become zero percent in this piece at that time, whatever is the weight of this piece, we call it oven dry weight. Okay? Oven dry weight. So initial weight we know, oven dry weight we know, a whole divided by oven dry weight multiplied by 100 is, is the formula for knowing the moisture content of wood when, when it was cut freshly and kept inside the oven. So this, this is the method which is known as oven dry method, which is foolproof. Otherwise, there are many things, many methods. One is sensor type of moisture, sensor type moisture content where we can switch on battery operated, we can switch it on. And it is just like mobile device, we keep under the, uh, over the uh, wooden plank. And after some time, it gives the reading of moisture content. Another is pin type moisture content, wherein we hit the uh, plan, wooden plank with this pin type moisture content. So there are three pins or two pins, which will go some two to three mm inside the wood. And after some time, they will tell the reading in the attached meter, electric meter. So after uh, calculating and doing the corrections. So these two devices, sensor type of moisture content and this uh, pin type moisture content are not very accurate. This is our practical experience because they are meant for veneer industry or paper industry where material is very thin and uniform. Otherwise, solid wood piece is not uniform homogeneous. It is not homogeneous because it has been reported that uh, all properties of wood, including density, moisture content, they, there is a variation of 20% from pith to periphery, from bottom to top, 
and from basal log to um, branch wood. So when there is 20% variation, it means wood is not homogeneous material, just like gold or silver or copper. These are very homogeneous metals. So their properties do not change in the X, Y, Z direction. Whereas in case of timber being biological material, its properties change in X, Y, Z direction. So we have to take average method, which averages with weight. That's why one drive method which is based on average weight is foolproof so we should go for this method only in case of solid wood industry okay so this is the formula now here in this formula there is an anomaly that in denominator you see there is one drive weight written is one drive weight whereas basic formula for example in your room so many people are sitting so if I ask what is the percentage of females in your hall where you are sitting in at, at IWST, you will calculate number of female divided by total number of people present multiply by 100. So this will give their percentage of female. Whereas in this case, initial weight is not coming in the denominator. Why? The reason is that anybody who is dealing with wood science can tell easily. In wood science and technology, whenever we measure any property, we need a fixed point benchmark or reference point, which is which should not change. So in wood science and technology, it has been seen that one dry weight never changes of any given piece. You take a piece, dry it in the oven till oven dry and then measure its weight. Then again, soak this piece many times in a bucket full of water. Then again, do the same experiment. You will give, you will get same reading of one dry weight, provided you do not physically damage the wood piece. So in wood science and technology, whenever we measure the properties, we measure at two moisture content at one dry weight at 12% moisture content because 12% is more practical for daily uses. Because when we season the wood, we never season below 8%. Because when we season any, any given wood below 8% moisture content, then it becomes brittle and many strength properties uh, may compromise. So there is a wastage of money as well as quality of wood. So we never recommend that wood should be dried below 8% of moisture content with respect to its oven dry weight. So this is the reason why we have used oven dry weight in the denominator. Just like that, GMT is reference point, fixed reference point for um, uh, tuning uh, time of any nation. Similarly, zero is fixed reference point in mathematics and other things. And same is the case in case of wood science, on dry weight is the fixed reference point. So if I report in my research paper that I have calculated density of this wood, that, that, then I must refer at what moisture content. So only two moisture contents are practical, which people will appreciate. Either I should report at one dry weight, this is the density of wood, or at 12% moisture content, this is the density of the wood. Otherwise, it keeps on changing with moisture content. 